Greetings from Pennsylvania once again. We're back here in Swatara State Park. Today is a Monday morning, August 21st. But I, I was out here on Saturday, this past Saturday, the 19th, filming for the, uh, an episode on our Union Canal series, talking about the, the big uh, flood from 1862. We were up here by the big dam at Lock 6. And while I was there, I saw a very interesting plant that I've been looking for. I haven't seen for years. And we're gonna put it in our uh, Poisonous Plants of Pennsylvania series. Yeah, so like I said, I've been hoping to find this plant. I don't see it too often, so when I saw it, I was like, oh, we gotta come back and do a video on it. So we're not too far. Down here is one of the locks down there. We filmed all those in the past. But we gotta make a way just a little up here yet. Hopefully they're still there. Like, so they're there Saturday afternoon. And as you can tell by the title of the video, it's this plant is called White Baneberry. Of course, the word bane is a bad thing. If something is your bane, and, you know, it's your enemy. It goes by another common name. It often gets called doll's eyes. Yeah, you heard me right, doll's eyes. And the berries, which are the most toxic part of the plant, do look like eyes. Most of you know how I feel about dolls, especially finding them out in the woods. Like recently we found that that doll with the Coke bottle, with the Coke can. I think that was at French Creek State Park. That was that was kind of wrong. So finding dolls' eyes, like out here in the woods, attached to a plant, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> besides the plaque, besides the fact that the plant is poisonous too. Yeah, there's actually some right here. Just up there is lock number six. I'd seen some on the other side, but I just glanced. And there's some right here. There we go. Doll's eyes. Check these things out. There's a closer look at them. See that? Those white berries with the black dot in the middle. They kind of look like a, like a doll's eye. Wow. They're e easily distinguishable. I mean, they stand out here. That's what the leaves look like. But you wouldn't really identify a plant by its leaves as much as how these berries just stand out like this. Well, that's pretty cool to find them right there. I'm gonna walk down this way anyway. We're gonna find a place to sit and chat. Maybe there's some more down here. And they do grow in shaded woods like this. They don't really grow out in the open sun. Yeah, we were here just, uh, like I said, it's past Saturday. Here's lock six again. We're talking about how the big, the big dam here and how that gave way in 1862. Yeah, I saw a bunch more over on that side. And sure, some people might ask, well, if you saw them on Saturday, why didn't you film them on Saturdays? Because I like to do a little bit more research on the plant before I make a video about it. So that's what I did this morning quick. Looked up some more things about it, some more information. So I have more to give you in a video rather than just doing a video on limited knowledge. I mean, I knew, I knew the plant was poisonous, but I didn't know a whole lot more about it. So yeah, I'm just looking for a place to sit, chat with you. We might go down in here again, but I just looked across there I do see the ones I saw yesterday. Let me see if I can find them as I zoom in with the camera. Not sure how far we'll zoom in here. Is that them right there? Hold on a second, where are they? There they are. I can't zoom in zoom in anymore. There's a bunch of them right there. So that's where I was yesterday, like I said. Yeah, I'm up on the other side now. I just thought I'd come over here. Yeah, here's. Another huge bunch of them. And yeah, there's more. Yeah, there's some right there. Right there. There's another bunch. I've never seen so many in one spot. They're everywhere here.
Yes, yeah, so once again, here is the name of the plant. It is white baneberry. There's its scientific name below down there. Of course, interestingly enough, Paki, I the name for you, Pachypoda. Pachypoda means thick foot. Poda means foot. Like if you go to the podiatrist, uh, poda is Latin for foot. Pachy means thick. It just refers to the, the root of the plant, what they call the rhizome, is, is pretty thick. And yes, it says white baneberry because there is a red baneberry too, which is also poisonous. But it gets confusing. I was reading the one website. Sometimes white baneberry does have red berries and sometimes red baneberry has white berries, so they're not entirely sure. There could be some like hybrid hybridization going on there between the two species, but they, there are two distinct species out there. But like I said, they're both, they are both toxic. And there are some other common names for the plant as well, most dealing with what the plant looks like. So you have white cohosh, white beads, I'm not sure where toad root comes from, and then the one that's best known for is doll's eyes. That's the one that makes it creepy. Because I know every year with my students, especially in my environmental science class, uh, the one day we do a, I do like a slideshow where I have edible, medicinal, and poisonous plants, and they have to guess. Like, I, I don't tell them anything about the plant, I just throw the slide, what's well, not slides, you know, it's, it's from my computer. I just have it projected on the TV screen. And they have to guess, is it edible or is it not? And then, uh, but then later we go through them again and I tell them what the plant actually is and if it's edible or not. And they see how well they do, if, if, they, if they survive or not. So, I always mention they're called doll's eyes. It's one of my favorite ones to come to. So the entire plant is toxic. You know, the leaves, the stem, the berries, the roots. But the toxins are concentrated in the roots and most in the berries. So let's talk a little bit about what happens to you. I think I'll just read from my notes here a little bit. But they have something called cardiogenic toxins. And if you know your Latin, you know what cardio refers to, and that's your heart. So interestingly enough, it acts as a sed it has a sedative effect on your heart muscle, which might sound kind of nice at first, help you to calm down. But the problem is it it helps you to calm down too much. It actually stops your heart. You go into cardiac arrest. And and that's it. You're gone. So it's like quite a, yeah. It, it, there's a number of other lesser, shall we say, side effects too, if you were to eat the berries. But actually they say that there's hardly any, there's hardly uh, that much poisoning from the berries because once again, they're similar to another berry did, the, uh, uh, what was that? The bitter, Bittersweet Nightshade. We did that one a little while ago. These berries are very bitter. So when, even if someone wants to try them, they, they almost look like white chocolate, you know, but <laughs> they have a very bitter taste, so if the person isn't likely to ingest the berry, they'll probably spit it out, and keep spitting the juice out because it's very bitter, so people dying or getting sick from white bane root is a very rare thing, so. But let's look at some of the other side effects here. Uh, a burning in the mouth or the throat, excessive salivation, where you're salivating a lot, stomach cramps, headaches, the big D, and <laughs> diarrhea, um, and then you get dizziness or hallucinations can be another side effect too. Also, respiratory paralysis where you just you can't breathe anymore. Kind of, ha it's having that sedative effect, you know. But and then the main one, like I said, is cardiac arrest and death even. So those are the effects that you can have if you were to accidentally ingest baneberry, which it says, which like I said, is kind of unlikely due to the very bitter taste that it has. But that's. What can happen. So here's another look at some of them once again. See how well we can zoom in. Sometimes the camera likes to blur out. There we go. But you know, even though many people wouldn't eat them because they're bitter, you know, they, they look like from a child's perspective, they look like they'd be fun to play with. And then they could end up in a child's mouth anyway, so there's definitely some danger there, I would say. I was just thinking about that as I'm looking at them again. Like they look like something you'd want to almost play with. Like the one name for them is called white beads. And it's like little beads you'd want to play with. I guess if you got the juice on your fingers and put them in your mouth, because they'd be bitter too. So I don't know, I'm still, yeah. So I can see how they could be accidentally ingested perhaps. So but it's good to know what they are. So even though these berries are toxic, toxic to humans. There are some birds that actually eat them and don't suffer any side effects from that. 
because um, I know in some survival circles they tell you, you know, when it comes to what berries are safe to eat, well, what are the birds eating? You know, that's not always a safe way to look at things because there are birds that can eat certain poisonous berries that uh, humans can't eat, so that's not always a good practice, shall we say. I want to find that big, huge bunch that we saw earlier. Get a few more photos. There's, there's that awesome lock number six again on the Union Canal. All right, I gotta find where those were again. And I will mention too that there are some medicinal properties of white baneberry. Um, the Native Americans had several, but due to its toxicity to people and the fact that it can cause death, situations like this, I'm not gonna cover the medicinal aspects unless you're really a, a pro or really good at this kind of stuff, you should probably just let that aspect of it go. Because if you mess up, you know, you're going to cause damage. Alright, so heading back to the rail trail. I think that bunch of... was right up here. Where were you? Oh, there they are, yeah. Nice big bunch of them. Like I said, they look... they almost look kind of tasty. Let me see little... Zoom in nicely. Now let me get a better shot. Yeah, like I said, they kind of look tasty, like little pieces of white chocolate with a dark chocolate center, but uh, that's not the case. So I'm not describing them that way in order to tempt you to try them. I'm just saying that's kind of what they look like. And that's the danger of poisonous plants like this sometimes. They look, they look kind of yummy, but they're not. Actually, they're not at all because like they're very bitter tasting too so you might put them in your mouth pop one in your mouth and that mosquitoes that's why like i said earlier poisonings do these are kind of rare because they just don't taste good it'd be different if you popped one of those in your mouth or somebody else and they actually tasted like chocolate then the poisoning rate would be so much higher because they actually taste good but they don't so a lot of times things that are toxic have a very bitter taste to them anyway but anyway, now you know what white baneberry looks like. Have you ever come across those in the woods? This is late August, like this is the 21st. This is about the time that they first start ripening like that and they'll last through the fall till the first frost usually. So if you see them, that's what they are. So just, just let them be. Don't touch them, don't mess with them. But there you go. All right, that'll be it folks. As always, thanks for coming along and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.